I'm folding it vertically. Vertically. Show me vertical. Arms like this, vertical. Remember, and if we test it, what's the next stage in our engineering design process? Improve. Improve. Okay, I'm gonna look at it in just one second. I'm trying to get our calendar up. So as a lottery-based school, we have the privilege of servicing girls that are from every zip code, every socioeconomic background, every racial demographic background uh, to come here to become the next change makers. We are doing things that look just a little bit different than most schools in the county. Do we have to pour all the glitter in? This is our first year. We have K through two, and every year we will add a grade level until we get to eighth grade. Currently, we have 133 brilliant scholars who are part of our RISE family, and next year we will add an additional 50 scholars to kindergarten as we increase and move up into third grade. Here you go. RISE STEM Academy is uh, a school with endless possibilities. That's what I see. It caught my attention and, and um, um, my heart is always working with women and working with, with girls. And I saw this school as an endless opportunity, endless possibilities for preparing the girls of today for tomorrow's citizens, tomorrow's empowering women of tomorrow. RISE really was a dream of our late Superintendent Kalk. And that dream was to make sure that every single girl had a seat at the table and had an opportunity to change the face of the STEM industry. Since the beginning of time, the STEM industry has been dominated by white males. And so we know that if we are going to change that, if we are going to disrupt that system, then it starts with us here and it starts with our scholars as young as five years old. And so we really take our vision and really Manny's vision to heart. It is something that lives in everything we do. Um, and that is to make sure that all of our scholars have that opportunity to break that glass ceiling. We read a book, it was Ava Twist, The Scientist, and then we read a book about Rosie the Red. A school like this is pertinent in this climate because it is so important for our girls to not only get hands-on STEM experiences, but also to see women that look like them in the STEM industry. Raise your hand if you're finished with your paper airplanes. In the area of STEM, there's not many African-American women, not many women of color, and not many women, uh, period. And so being able to start from the beginning, from kindergarten, get them early before anyone can tell them no or what they can't do and allow them to see what they can do and what they can achieve, uh, it's important to catch them early and let them know that the sky's the limit. It means everything to me as a woman of color. I believe that it removes barriers for our scholars and it's also given them an opportunity to enter into a field that they otherwise would not have knowledge about. We are fortunate enough to have just an incredibly diverse group of scholars. So 65% of our scholars are scholars of color. Um, the remainder scholars are representative white. And then that's also represented in our staff. Our scholars have to to see what they can become, right? Um, and, and it certainly can't be just myself as a white director, but I need to make sure that my girls can see themselves in everyone that works here. And guess what, friends? You guys get to make a wobbling up today. STEM really is a lot more than just thinking of it as science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Uh, it's really about creating a, a space and an opportunity for our scholars to grapple with real world problems and to do that in a way where it's transdisciplinary. And what that means is really making sure that all content areas are working together collaboratively and not in that isolated silo. So when we, when we think about our curriculum and we use something called the STEM Roadmap Framework, and it's something that, it's a book that comes out of NSTA and it really helps guide us with the themes, the STEM themes throughout every grade level. And those themes are represented in every part of what we do as humans. I think it's really awesome to see the way that our girls are being empowered to be creative and to work with their hands more often than they sometimes are in a traditional school and in a way that 
sometimes is the boy's thing in a lot of people's eyes um, to work with their hands. Girls are supposed to play with dolls and paint their nails. And here we have girls working with their hands every single day um, and doing things, working creatively, building. And I think that that's a really cool way to see their brains work and a cool way to see them grow. Go ahead and write 108 for me on your whiteboards and then hold them up high. When we think about our statistics of our number of of women that are in the, the science industry, in the fields. We're looking at numbers that are in the very low percentages. 13% of women are in the engineering field. 23% are in computer science. And so if we want to change the game, we have to change the way that it looks and, that, and the way that it looks and starts at a young age. So we are in an incredible position to be able to service and to bring this mindset, to bring this, the, the engineering design process, that process of thought where you start with one thing and it might not work. So you make revisions, you make changes, you go back, you look at it, you think about what worked, what didn't work and cycle back again. Um, that's something that we as adults do in our everyday life. But here we're really able to give that foundation and that understanding. So we're creating a place where our scholars are becoming those critical thinkers and those problem solvers. They will be able to go out into the world and really disrupt this system that has for so long not allowed them a seat at that table. Right now we're engaging in a STEM activity. And so we're learning about force and flight and thrust. So each scholar actually got to pick which model of plane they want to choose, regardless of its difficulty level. And so right now they're in the engineering design process. They did a blueprint. We're about to go outside and test the distance. So their objective was to see how far it could go. And then they had a secret code on it. So they got to have it go far. And then the person who gets it will see their secret code. This school is such a dream come true for me. I have my master's degree in STEM education, and so I've always wanted to work with children in that field. Also, being able to share my love of science and my love of STEM with little girls and inspire them to you know, grow up to be the next leaders of tomorrow and innovators of tomorrow, it's, it's just a wonderful opportunity for them and for us. When you look at schools that focus on a STEM education, a STEM foundation, uh, you're really looking at schools that are servicing scholars that are in middle school and high school. We are a very, very few select public schools that have started to say, why are we not starting at our, our scholars that starting off at age five? Why are we only starting at sixth grade? Why can't we create these habits of minds and this mindset from, from the young age, from when they first start their educational journey? We always expose them to a lot of different STEM experiments and a lot of hands-on activities. Just being able to let them know that they can accomplish anything as long as they work hard at it, I think has been very very rewarding to see them flourish. Scholars, let's make sure you have some space in between, okay? We know that scholars, students, will believe what we believe about them. If we believe that our scholars are destined for greatness, that they are going to change the face of the STEM industry, then we need to call that out into existence. And so a scholar is someone who is engaged in deep study um, and is knowledgeable and is always seeking and discovering. And so that's why we don't have students here, we have scholars. Raise your hand if you can tell me another. Uh, We're hoping that they um, see other sciences that look like them um, and that can be their role models and they can see that they can be successful in the STEM fields. These young women are looking at me as a woman. Um, what, what are you doing, Ms. Harned, that is different than other women? What walls are you breaking down? What ceilings are you shattering? Those kinds of things. And just to be that role model, um, it can feel heavy at times, but it also feels very empowering and um, inspiring for the future to come that we're doing here at RISE. Think of what's happening right now in the observation. So what really makes RISE different from a traditional educational model is the fact that 
we're not just reading about things, but we're actually doing things too. Um, so we truly believe that if our scholars are going to be able to engage and share their talents with the world within the STEM industry, they have to be able to have that opportunity to engage in hands-on learning.